I'm Tree and this is Stitchless TV. Now today on Stitchless TV we are going to make this colour block dress by So Different. So with this colour block pattern it, is, it comes in slightly on the sides and I wanted my dress to be so it went A-line straight out. So I'm going to show you the teeny weeny little changes I did to the side seams so that I could do that. So as you can see, what I did was just from more or less around the point of where the bust dart would be, I've just come down at a slight, slight angle and I came out from my dress size by about three centimetres on each side. Now this pattern is very easy to make. The way the pattern's set up is that it has all of its colour block sections on the front and then it has a regular back with a seam running down the back. But it doesn't have any zip and it doesn't have any buttonholes. Now, <laughs> because it's got a different shape going on on the front on the what side is that on the right hand side to the left side when you cut out the pattern pieces you're just going to cut one so when we're at the front we're going to cut one full side one of the half side one of the the bodice at the top bit but then the middle section is cut to a fold now, rather than doing a colour block, I've done more of a, a print block. So this is my plan for the front of the pattern. And this is what I've got planned for the back. Now, I think it's really important that when you cut out your diagonal lines, you either stabilise the diagonal lines with like a strip of stabilising tape or you could cut interfacing to a thin strip or you do a stay stitch line along there because you don't want the diagonal lines to stretch but I think it's a lot easier and you know me with my notches if in advance you lay out your pattern, you see where your pattern pieces have got to go so I lined it up from the bottom coming up and then I've just put notches to make sure that everything lines up as I sew and then I did the same on the other side. The colour block back piece comes like this, okay, where so that's how the back piece comes and it just has a little tiny bit of shaping at the back of the waist there and you're supposed to cut two of them and then you stitch them together with the seam down the back. Now what I've done it is I've more or less folded in in a straight line with the seam allowance, folded it in at the back and so these are usually together, yeah? And because I fancied having a, a kind of diagonal line and a bit of colour, well not colour blocking, pattern blocking at the back, I've done this. All I did was just cut a line down there and then I've added a seam allowance. So I just add the seam allowance that Laura does, which is 1.5 centimetres. When you draw out your line, it's really important that you just mark notches so when you pull them apart, you can notch your fabric, yeah? And then when, when you've done that, it means that you can have that cut to a fold, yeah? And you can have that sort of thing going on at the back, which isn't really hard to do, is it? This dress is available in loads of sizes. It goes from a UK size 8 to a UK size 26. And you can either choose to have the sleeveless version or the version 
with sleeves. Now I've shortened the sleeves quite a lot because they're, they're made to be three quarter length sleeves but I like my sleeves fairly short. Right, so we're ready to sew. Let's begin by sewing the front of the dress together. Because once you've sewn the front together and the back together, then it's just like sewing any other simple shift dress, I suppose. When you're cutting out your pattern and you're doing the front, so you just cut out one of the uh, full side and then you do one of the half side and then the bit at the top, it's really important to cut it with the fabric facing up, okay? So your fabric is facing up when you cut your singular pieces. So let's take this away. So this is the middle section. I'm going to open it out. I've already done my notches and I'm going to put it right sides together with the fabric. Okay, so that's the side, that's the middle section. I'm going to flop it over, line up all my notches that I've made, and I'll sew straight down that diagonal line. But because I've done the notches, I feel sure that everything will stay in place nicely. So look, so there's a lovely notch, lining up with the notch underneath. Wow, I must put some hand cream on. <laughs> so when you sew it, it should look something like that. It should be amazing. Now, I think that this is a very, very important thing. And lots of people, when they sew, don't do this. So, if your seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres, so if I just go like that with the pair of scissors, yeah? So imagine that's my seam allowance. That means when you have diagonal lines, you do not, you absolutely do not do this and match up those edges, okay? You do not, no, you do not do that. What you do is, so you imagine you're 1.5 centimetres, so, so it needs to overlap like this, so that your start is 1.5 centimetres away there and goes all the way down there. And the reason you do that is, let me try and show you, but I'll show you properly in a minute. So when you sew, that it, it goes down in a proper straight line. Does that make sense? That's really important actually. Okay, you'll be complaining. Well, I shouldn't assume, but um, it is quite rubbish because I've now got white fabric and white thread. I thought about doing black thread, but I really didn't want black thread. So, um, sorry, but you know what we're doing, don't you? So I'm starting at that funny V point, and I'm gonna go forwards, a couple of stitches, and back, and, oh, that is really slow. <laughs> I'm going to go straight down, following my seam allowance, but more importantly, keeping my notches that I created, yeah, keeping those in place. Now, when, when fabric is on the cross, it is really stretchy. Not really stretchy, but it's stretchy. So if you were to stretch this as you sew, that diagonal seam will be all wibbly wobbly. Now, if you're a designer, <laughs> You might want that as a feature, but we don't want that today. So as I sew, I'm letting the machine just feed, oh, I should have taken that off, feed the fabric through. I'm not doing any stretching at all. All I am doing is making sure as I go along that those two notches are together. Now, this rule is going to apply for all your other diagonal seams because we have got a few of them. So I line up my notch with my really dry hands. And 1.5 seam allowance. Going 
going all the way down. Right, you're going to encounter another situation with the little triangle bit. If everything's lined up properly, this does not finish like that. That does not happen. That's a no-no, okay? What does happen is that your seam allowance in there, you end up with that little V. So come all the way down to there and go backwards and forwards. So look, when you've done that, you end up with this. Now, because I was doing stripes, I had to really make sure that I captured all of the black in there. Now, what you need to do is, I'm going to overlock this, but you can leave it or cut it with pinking shears, zigzag it, it's up to you, but I'm going to overlock mine. Right, the next thing that we're going to do, so on that full side bit, there was a dart here on the side seam. Now, whenever I do darts, I do this. So the point at which it finishes, which is not where that red thing is, so the point at which where it finishes, okay, I press it just to that point with the iron, or I could have finger scored it, and then the line where I'm going to be stitching, I fold it over like that, and then I press it again. And then when I do that, or oh, finger score, <laughs> when I do that, look, you can see, can you, just about, <laughs> You can sort of make out the line of the dart and I just think it makes it really easy for me to sew because I'm just going to follow that press line there and go off, off into nothing there. So we now have the booby bus dart bit done and we have one side, the full side of our um, dress. So now we're going to put these two pieces together. And that dart has been absorbed into the seam here. Right, so now we're going to deal with the other side of the front. So that dart that we had over there, Laura's made it so it falls into the seam here. Okay, I've still got all my notches so that it will all fit together nicely. But we're going to move these pattern pieces. So this is the top, that's the neck, that's the armhole. I'll take that one away and I'm going to take the bottom section away. Now I've deliberately done them so that they're going in different directions. So I'm kind of pattern blocking, I'm not colour blocking. So using Laura's seam allowance of 1.5. So do you remember what I said? When you cross them over, you have to cross them over so you get a bit of a V with the seam allowance and then um, everything will line up. So when it's done, it will be something like that. So it's got that shape going on because of the dart being absorbed into that seam. Okay? So just using a straight stitch, you're going to sew along there. Wow, that's great. Look, so when, so when you've done that, you end up with that side. So then we're going to put this side together that has the triangle section stitched onto it together with this side now. And then that'll be the front complete. So I'm laying it on its side, okay, because otherwise I can't fit it in the frame. So fortunately, I did do, do you remember we did the notches? So they're what I'm going by. So I'm going to flop this over line it up at the hem more or less so i'm going to go by these notches okay that i created when i lined up my um when i lined up my pattern with the the hems so i've got all of those lined up I'm going to line up that one and then hopefully <laughs> it will finish in the right place up here now I have got something going on at the moment because I really want the, the tips of my lines to line up there. So I might just manipulate it a little bit so that does actually happen, but it's only a tiny adjustment. So when you've got that seam lined up, which is the attaching 
well it's attaching my left side to the dress you're going to use a straight stitch and sew all the way down to the hem and it will end up looking something like that which I think looks so nice oh I'm not faking it when I do this really excited thing oh, I think it's so looks so great doesn't it good bunny yeah, it makes me think of Judd <laughs> Well, I like that, Jad. I bet you will too. Look at that. I love it. But in order to get this look, you remember, you've got to come straight out at an angle from the bottom of that dart there, and then from the, you know, the bottom half piece here. And you've got to go out at the same angle and count the same centimetre edge at the hem, so you go, you know, like a triangle. And do that on the back as well. Look. We're now going to sew together the back of the colour block dress. But remember, I have changed it, sorry Laura, um, to have a triangle section in the back. But it's really easy. So remember, this is the back piece of the uh, colour block dress pattern. And usually you cut with the seam allowance and it has a slight curve there and you cut two and then you stitch them together really nice and easy but you know what I'm like <laughs> I have to go and make it complicated so I drew a diagonal line I made sure there were notches on either side of the lines okay I then Remember to add your 1.5 seam allowance, okay, and then just cut it out of the fabric. But, oh gosh, this is really important. If you do do that, you have to fold back the seam allowance that was in the pattern here, and you cut it to a fold, so it ends up like this, look. Now, I've marked out all my notches. So, putting the fabric, so you know it's going to go like that, don't you? But when I sew it, I put the fabric right sides together and I match up the notches. And then when I've done that, I'm going to do the other one as well. Wow. Look at that. That looks so good. Now remember, you, you could just use your regular shift dress pattern if you have one and create the, the diagonal lines. But I do really like the way the, the front of this pattern has this interesting section here and the dart, so you do get the fit. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to put the front and the back together and stitch up the shoulder seams ready to either apply the facing or maybe a stand up collar so with our front and our back right sides together we're now going to stitch up <laughs> we're going to stitch up the shoulder seams using the seam allowance of the pattern which I think was 1.5 centimeters and then just slip it on and make sure it goes over your head now with the pattern it comes with facings so you can just face it but oh, done that thing again haven't I um, I, I feel like my neck needs something else. I can't these days have it really plain around there. So I would either add ribbing to there or some sort of little collar or something, or this. So this is really easy to do. 
And it means that you don't have to do facings as well, not that there's anything wrong with facings. So it's a strip of fabric that you fold over and I find I don't need to do any shaping, not, not, not when I want it to actually stand up. Um, so I'm not going to shape it, it's simply a rectangle. Now I've no idea what that looks because I can't see myself, but it will be something like that. Now at the moment, what I'm struggling with is I can't decide whether to have the white side out because it will probably get quite dirty, won't it? Let's see. So should I have the white side out or should I have the black side out like that? In which case the white is going to get dirty. Anyway, I'm going to go away and think about that and then I'll show you how to do it. So usually, to do the neck, you would use the facings, cut to a fold, cut those to the fold, and then you'd put the right sides together and sew them in the same way as you did the shoulders. And then you would position them onto the garment, sew it around, and it would be done all nice and easy. But I'm hoping to do this stand up, well I am, I'm going to do this stand up collar, okay, so what I suggest you do is measure around the neck but add about that much because you need a bit of room for playing around and this, for me I've got to decide which colour I'm going to have on the front and the back, so I think I've decided from black and then what you've got to do is, starting at the back, with a seam allowance, okay, so I'm going to fold back a seam allowance, starting at the back, but I'm not going to start sewing right at the back, I'm going to start sewing a couple of centimetres in. Now I'm going to put these um, pegs on, but really I think it might have been better with pins, I'm going to get some pins. So I'm going to pin from the inside, I'm going to pin this uh, strip onto the neck. Okay, so I assume the seam allowance is the same, but I have to say, it, you know, when you put things on a curve, it is easier to do it with a smaller seam allowance. Anyway, so we're going to do it with the one and a half centimeter seam allowance. Now make sure you push your shoulder seams to the back. I know this just looks like a mess at the moment and you can't see it. But it'll be alright in a minute. So I'm going all the way round. So once you've gone all the way round, see how much you need to trim off in order for it to fit perfectly at the back. So mine almost fits perfectly um, if I'm working to a one and a half centimetre seam allowance then it's only a little bit bigger so I'm going to trim that back now just straight down like that and then before we sew anything the reason why we started a little way in is because we're going to stitch that up first press it back and then we're going to sew around it. But do you know what? Before you do that, you know the laws of if anything's on a curve, you do need to snip into it to the seam allowance. And um, I'm, I'm going to tell you to do that now if you're happy with your shape. Start snipping in to the, the seam allowance of the neckline on the dress because it's just going to make it so much easier for you to sew. So I don't really need to do it along the front. So do you know what I'm doing here? So I'm doing it on the actual dress, not on that stand-up collar bit, not yet anyway. And I'm going in as far as where the seam allowance is. Now be careful when you do it because you don't want to trim the bits that you're not supposed to trim yet. Yeah? So I've done that on the dress at the front, so now I'm going to do it at the back as well. 
because you would do it afterwards but I know it's going to make it so much easier for us to sew when we sew it if we do it now now all my pins are on the inside yeah I haven't put them on the outside so I haven't put it on the rectangle of the collar I've put them all inside because I'm going to be sewing inside when I um, ultimately sew it right so what you need to do is if you've trimmed off your little bit and you're really sure that it's definitely the right size then put some pins in that are going to be the seam allowance and before you do anything else, just stitch that up because that's going to form the back, the back neck of your collar yeah, before you fold it down. So now that I have stitched it up, I can open out that seam so it's nice and flat. Make sure the seams are open in there. Get one of these pins. in the wrong direction okay so now I'm ready to sew all the way around there yeah so we're inside the neck we're going to sew all the way around with the seam allowance so I'm inside the whole of the neck as in the H-O-L-E yeah <laughs> and I'm going to start sewing and hopefully you can see, it's quite awkward for me. The seam allowance away. And I snipped it so it lays flat as I sew it. And I'm going to go all the way around. Just keep moving this. Go all the way around inside that hole. And then over sew where you started when you've come back on yourself. And then just have a look at what you've got. But you will need to trim some of that excess off. Look how nice and clean it is. So have a look. Look how neat it is. Okay. So you need to make sure that this seam is open at the back. And then what you're going to do is you're going to press the same seam allowance that you did on attaching the collar. Make sure all around the curve has been snipped. That's really important. Then push the seam allowance up and then fold down what is kind of like you're facing. Fold that down and then hold it in place with something. It's going to be a bit tricky because, well, for me, it's going to be tricky because my fabric's really thick. I've held that in place. Now I want you to go all the way around and do that. But what I'm going to do, so I'm, I'm pushing up the seam allowance. I'm creating a bit of a hem. I'm trapping everything all inside. Laying it flat. And then I'll put a pin there. So make it so it just hangs over just a tiny bit. Just a little bit. Now what you're going to do is you're going to... Well what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get a strip of bonder web inside and I'm going to bond it into place till I have enough time to hand sew it. So I'm going to go and do that now with an iron. So I'm going to put bonder web inside here, fold back the seam allowance of the facing and then press it all together. So we are running out of time but I just want to show you how neat, look how neat that is. Okay, and inside, it's very neat. And all it needs is for me to hand sew it, which will be easy because I've done the bonder wet. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to show you an easy way to do an inset sleeve. Very easy. And then when we've done that, you just need to stitch up the side seams and then you're done. If you are overlocking, I recommend you overlock your sides and the bottom now. And then you've got to do a very large stitch going around the shape of the, the head of the sleeve, a little bit smaller than the seam allowance away. And you must have a notch that signifies the top of the sleeve. Now it is handy to have a notch for the front 
and the back as well and I have done that and I've also done it on the the dress but it seems that the sleeve that Laura's using it must be a very relaxed sleeve because there is no front and back okay so it's cut to the fold so you just want to create a little bit of ease it's not gathering you pull just one thread no gathering just a bit of ease so you don't want to see any gather lines you just want a bit of ease and the place that you want the ease is only over the head of the sleeve around here and then when you've done that get your dress open out your dress so we haven't stitched up our side seam now make sure your seam allowance is going towards the back on the shoulder align that center notch of where the fold was on your sleeve now I can do this without pins if I know the fit is right by sewing from the shoulder down and then flipping it over and sewing from that shoulder down but for you I'll do it without I've got to reach over it in order to put the pins on sorry so where you will sew in a minute using a normal stitch now is in the well of that stitch line that was just created okay and you'll go all the way here and you'll do it all the way on the other side as well just pin them all so when you've pinned it it should look like that now you sew it from the sleeve side so you're going to sew from there go all the way along to there you don't sew it from the dress side so when you've done both sleeves you do need to do the other one afterwards it should look like this now we do need to overlock it around the sleeve and press it towards the sleeve head as if to fill the sleeve head now it's very nice if you have a ham great big round thing for pressing because then you can like form the sleeve nicely now all you have to do is put your fabric right sides together so we're not hemming the sleeves yet so after you've overlocked that bit all you have to do now is put your fabric right sides together put match up the seams of the armholes put a clip or a pin there now as you sew the side seams, hopefully you've created some um, notches, but what I want you to do, I want you to start at the armpit, come down the sleeve, which you will then hem, and then start at the armpit and go down the side seam. Now I've got something hiding in here, which are inseam pockets. If you want to know how to do them, then go and watch my tutorial on how to do inseam pockets, but I won't be showing you today. <laughs> So I'm going to quickly go and do that because my kids are going to be home any minute now. Okay, I'm hoping that you can see all of it. So that's the front. That's the back. And I think it's really nice. But I can't believe I just splashed lipstick. Right. So I want to show you this. So, oh, I've got lipstick on. I can't believe I've got lipstick on it. Oh. Anyway, what I need to do, I feel like this seam is too long for me. Look, if I have boobies like this, then I'd be all right. I used to have boobies like that, actually. So two things. One, look where that dart is. It's too high. Now, if you're doing it on the pattern, you know when you want to lower and high make higher a dart you just cut out a rectangle in the area of where the dart is and you slide it down or you slide it up so that isn't a full bust adjustment that's a different thing this is just to lower or higher that dart right so that's that so i, I need to lower this but on your pattern you'll do it like that but Definitely, I want to take away this excess here. 
So I'm going to grab the seam like that from the inside, I think I am, um, and then lose all of that. So I'll have, oh, I'll have to take the neck off when I do it. But what do you think of it? Comment below. It's supposed to be colour block. So everything is accentuated because I've got all these lines everywhere. The sleeves. Oh, I was really surprised. The sleeves set in really nicely. And there was no difference between the front and the back. They look really nice. Anyway, thank you so much. I'll just hold it there. Thank you so much for watching. Have a look at our tutorial on how to make a colour block dress from scratch or if you're going to buy this pattern colour block dress from sodifferent.co.uk Thank you so much for watching. See you again really soon. Bye! And inseam pockets. If you want to add inseam pockets go watch our video on how to sew inseam pockets. And mine are normal.